If you do not understand white supremacy, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time. Good morning, and welcome to the September 5th, 2023 edition of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and we hope that we have a good show for you today. We would like for you to be a participant in this show, so we're going to give you some numbers how you can contact the show the first number is the just a call in number and many of you know that but for those who are new to the program here it is 516-453-9921 then when you get that number um, when they enter the phone the call screener give them your name so that I can properly uh, introduce you and then uh, when it's your turn then you may ask your question or give a brief comment, please, ma'am, and please, sir, make it so that that Mr. Fuller can understand your comment. So, in other words, be brief, be brief and to the point so that he can answer it, and um, we can go on from there. If you happen to be a very first-time caller, make sure that you give the call screener your name and tell them that you are a first-time caller and uh, we have something set up very special for you that you can be heard. Again, the same rules apply. Be brief so that Mr. Fuller can fully understand and answer your request. The second way that you can do that is that you can write me by Gmail. That is the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, M-R-B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. You can do that. Now, I will send you a, a symbol, for the most part, that I have received your message. And uh, your message will go in rotation. And when it does, it will be heard when uh, the call volume is not so heavy. Then we can get to your question, and Mr. Fuller can um, answer that for you. The third way is that you can join the chat room. All you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com. When you get there, you want to click on uh, Programs, and the program that you want is the Produce Justice Show. You click on that, and the chat room becomes available to you, and um, you can get in and ask your questions, uh, or rather, you can chat. Now, do not use the chat room, ma'am or sir, to ask me a question to ask Mr. Fuller, uh, because that just can't happen. That's what the telephone line is for, or the Gmail is set up for. For you to ask me a question to ask Mr. Fuller. I rather, uh, yeah, well, yeah, 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 ask me a question that way and that can be done. Okay. And um, I think that is, oh, yes, listen, I was just informed that Mr. Fuller was on the Carl Nelson show last week, last Thursday. I think that was uh, August the 31st. He was on. They didn't give me a time, but I'm assuming that at the time that the show was recorded was probably from 8 to 10 a.m. But if I understand it correctly, um, you can hear that interview by going to blog, or rather going to producejustice.com. I believe the interview is up there. I am going to listen to it myself. I wish that I had known that he was going to be on Thursday. I would have announced it. But anyway, it is up. And for your listening pleasure, you can get more, hear more of Mr. Fuller on the Carl Nelson Show from last week, which was the 31st of August, 2023. Okay, with that being said, oh, one more thing about calling in. Make sure that if you have a question, make sure you push that number one button so that, um, you know, you can do that. Give the call screen your name 
and then I can properly give you an introduction as much as I possibly can without butchering it, which I seem to butcher every week, not on purpose. I try to do it phonetically, but it, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Okay, sesh number seven, thank you, Emery. Lumumba, thank you. And, um, yeah, thank you for being part of the chat room and being faithful. Okay, well, for those who are new to the program, we have a, a section here that we have the thoughts and expressions on the mind of Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and so we're going to get to that after I ask this question. Mr. Fuller, good morning, and how are you? Good morning. I'm still learning. Okay, coming in loud and clear. Okay, Mr. Fuller, thoughts and expressions on your mind. What do you have for us today? Well, I just can't turn loose to uh, the subject of contact. People being in contact with each other, period. And the nature and the quality of the contact. I think that most people, including mine, don't make the correct contact in order to do the things that need doing. And we need, we and and also we have too many things that we seem to have to think that we need to do. We need to reduce the things. Don't start adding things, things to do. Somehow, directly and indirectly, and this is what causes a whole lot of stress and a whole lot of problems. We just have fallen in the habit, it seems like many people, and I have to guard against it myself, just keep adding to the list of to-do things when we should be doing as best we can reducing that list. So one way to do it is just make up a list of all the things that you do. All the things that you think you were planning on doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then go through that list and start lining out stuff. Reduce the number of things that you think that you have to do. There's a lot of things that we're probably doing that we think we have to do that we really don't have to do these things at all. We've just gotten in the habit of doing them. And the list just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And the longer the list gets, a lot of the things are not constructive at all, but it's just habit. And start lining out these things. And that includes a whole lot of contacts with a lot of people that you don't need to have contact, contact with. And it's not being disregarding the people that you know and and uh, want to be associated with in some way, but reduce the number of contacts with even the best of people that you have that you say are contact people and make all the contacts quality and try to be as brief as possible in making these contacts and make them problem-solving contacts. All of your, all of your contacts, and I'll say this regarding black people, every contact that you make with anybody after that contact is made, you should be able to look back the moment that the contact is over and say, now that was a constructive contact. Constructive. Every contact that you make with every person from now on, white or non-white, 
after that contact, you should think about it and say, now, was that contact that I just made with this person constructive or non-constructive? It's going to be one or the other. And then start uh, enumerating the times that you make contact with anybody. We're all on our phones all day long, never being off of them. So start going through all of these contacts and say, well, is that contact necessary? And in order to do what? And was it, did it produce a constructive result? Those two words to dominate the entire existence of you on this planet or really any other planet to turn up on. Was it constructive? Did it produce a constructive result? And evaluate it. And if it didn't produce a constructive result, try to get rid of that baggage. Say, well, that's not constructive at all. I have found out from experience. So why do I keep engaging in that type of contact? And it will be helpful for the other person. Because nothing that anybody does is supposed to produce anything that's non-constructive. So it's not a personal thing. It's logical according to the compensatory code and according to logic, this basic logic, which is what any code is worth being called a constructive code Mm -hmm. should produce constructive results. That's all I have to say about that. I'm ready for questions. Oh, okay, let's see here. All righty. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Fuller. And want to give a special hello to Brody Denial, mentioning that he's been following you and listening to the program, Mr. Fuller, for at least two years. And this is the first time that he's actually made contact via the chat. So, Brody, good. Brody Denial, if I said it properly but thank you for for listening and welcome to the program yes welcome to the program and good morning also to Rita Triple A good morning we're good we are good okay let's get to the phone lines and uh, we will do that you know the numbers but just in case you are new to the program the number is 516-453-9921 and make sure that when you do get to that number and the phone is answered, make sure that you give the call screener your name. And I'm looking at this list here, and somebody with the prefix, numerical prefix of 832, but no name is under there, make sure you give um, out your name. Okay, anyway, let's go to Milwaukee. Corey is in the first slot. Okay, Corey, get ready. I'm going to try my best to... Make it happen, and let's see. Here we go. Okay, Corey, you are on. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, Mr. Bobby, and good morning, Mr. Fuller. Um, thanks for taking my call. If I could remain on the line, that would be positive. Um, okay. Mr. Fuller, my question is, um, should, should minimal constructive contact, uh, speaking on what you were talking about this morning should minimal constructive contact continue between a black male and a black female if one or both of those people are in a direct subjugation to a white supremacist in the form of a sexual relationship should the two black male and female continue to have minimal constructive contact It depends on what they're doing and what area of activity. And that that applies to anybody and everybody. 
interaction between white people, non-white people, male, female, male, male, female, female, people, period, offspring, all contacts. If you're talking to your offspring, what you call your child, is this contact constructive or non-constructive? And the only way you know that is to look back at whatever you you were supposed to be doing. Did it have a constructive effect? See, black people should start thinking in terms of everything is going to either be constructive or non-constructive. And start dumping everything, everything that doesn't produce a constructive result. So that's just always the question. And we need that more now than uh, ever before, uh, but we've always needed it. Actually, you need it from the day you are born. Everything is going to be divided, or should be, in the constructive, non-constructive. So that question, after any kind of contact you make with anybody, if we're talking about contacts, doesn't make any difference who the people are. Was it constructive or was it not? Did it have a constructive result? That's it. Those two words should dominate every move that you make. Just look back on it because you learn from that. You're supposed to learn. And so what do you learn from every experience? Was that constructive or was it not? It's going to be one or the other. There's no such thing as in between. Uh, uh, you, you have to look at it that way. Everybody on the planet should look at it that way. I made this contact today. I went to a two-hour meeting. Was that constructive or was it non-constructive? Uh, you know, we set up a committee to do this and do that. Did we accomplish what the committee was set up for. If the answer is no, you go back through whatever you discuss and ask why. Because all problems, according to logic, I call it compensatory code, because you're making up for what's missing. All problems are solved through the process of questions and answers, and one of them most important question is why? Why was this meeting non-constructive? It didn't produce a constructive result. Why? And then, you, if you can find it, the reason why, and answer to that question, then say, well, we're not going to do that again in that particular way. Because here's where the problem was. Pinpoint where the problem was that the meeting was not constructive when the meeting was supposed to be constructive. And uh, that that should be in everything that we do from now on. We mean mm-hmm. really everybody on the planet. No matter among primitive people, wherever they are, if they're a bunch of fishermen, I mean, off the coast of the, um, or somewhere in the Cameroons or something, just look at it and say, was that constructive or not? And just mm-hmm. think that way all day long, every day, and then find out why. And say, well, I'm not doing that no more. Why? Because it's not constructive. That's why. Mm -hmm. Nothing personal. It's business. (laughs) Hmm. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, Corey. And I'll do my best to keep you on the uh, line here. Okay, 516-453-9921 is the contact number. And be sure... If you have a question or comment, to pr- press the number one button and give a 
call screen of your name, and now somebody just disappeared. How about that? Looks like it was Delbert in Texas. I don't know what's going on. It says cellmates. They're call mates. But anyway, I'm going to try this. I hope the usual suspects are not in play already, but let's go here. All righty. It says call mates, so let me see here. Let's see if this Hello? will work here. Okay, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Good morning, Mr. Bobby. This is Tess. Uh, good morning, Mr. Tess Fuller. Is, yeah, up here it just says call mates. And it looks uh, like Delbert from Texas got booted off. I don't know what's going on. Delbert, excuse me. Uh, uh, excuse me. Delbert, if that was you, uh, call back. Okay, my brother, go ahead. Yes, this sir. is call mates here, so go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. It's been a while since I called in. I've been away for several weeks, but... Thank you, guys. Uh, love the updated website. You guys are doing a great job. My question is, uh, Mr. Fuller, how is distractions used by those? What What is the main purpose of distractions uh, to their cause? Thank you. All righty. Mr. Fuller? Anything that you evaluate as a distraction. Depending on what you set up, and, and distraction means you're going from one mindset to another. In other words, you're trying to do something, and something distracts you from doing it. So all you have to do to compensate for that is find out what was it I was trying to do. And... It's supposed to be something that's going to produce a constructive effect. So anything that came up that distracted you, look at that thing that distracted you. And that's in any type of relationship, any type of interaction. If you're trying to write something and somebody's got a horn blowing outside the window, they're blowing the horn on the vehicle, for an example, and they're doing it and doing it, and you're trying to concentrate on some figures that have to do the transaction, some business, and you notice you're getting this distraction. This horn has been blowing somebody, trying to get somebody else's attention, apparently, by blowing the horn on that car, and it's been going on for 30 minutes. And you, you realize that, hey, I, I'm, I'm messing up everything here. I can't, I can't concentrate. That's what distraction means. You, you can't consolidate your thoughts in such a way that you can get what? A constructive result. So what you do is stop and move your position or basically get away from the quote unquote distraction. Mm -hmm. Wait till it stops so you move your position away where you don't hear it. Why? Because it's a distraction. Well, what kind of distraction would not? Well, it's a horn blowing. So you, everything, see, there are some situations that are a distraction for you, but somebody else is blowing this horn on a vehicle, and it might be that they're testing their horn. They're giving their horn a test because they want to make it louder. So it's not a distraction for them, mm -hmm. but it is for you. So it's just that simple. Does it have a constructive result for you? Because you have your attention on something else. You are not trying to make a horn on a vehicle Louder. And that's what the person who is blowing the horn is doing. So they don't have any distraction. 
unless somebody stops them from blowing the horn. Which if there are other people, I mean, who decide to approach the source of what they call the distraction, or somebody else goes out and says, uh, Sir, can you go somewhere else and do what you're doing because you're distracted? I'm on the night shift where I work. And this is a distraction for me. And if you can, in any other way, or find some way where you can do this some other place, I would appreciate it. Always be polite so that that doesn't become a distraction. Because if you go down cursing the person out and all like that, you are doing what? You're adding to the problem now. If you're making a request, do it politely. Mm-hmm. That can become a distraction if you don't. Yeah. Okay. All righty. We'll do that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, um, Mr. Further. Thank you, um, sell, uh, call mates. Uh, call mates. And thank you very much um, for that. Uh, let's do this. Delbert, I got you back, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to get a little break, station break, and then I'm going to get to you. And then, Ross, I mean, you're next. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, and we so very much thank you here, the Counter Racist Code Show. Now, if you would love to be a participant, and man, we would love to have you. Here's the number, 516-453-9921. Get up in here. You're there. If you want a question, push the number one button so that you can speak to the call screener, give the call screener your name so that I could properly give you an introduction, and you can ask your question when it is your turn. Please, ma'am, please, sir, be brief. Please be brief. Okay, you can also contact me by using my Gmail across that is um, account. It is the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby M R, and B O B B Y at gmail dot com. And then you can ask me your question to ask Mr. Fuller. Again, do not be long winded. Just make it short and concise so that I may ask Mr. Fuller what you request. And lastly, you may join the chat room. And all you have to do to that is go to blogtalkradio.com. You want to make sure that you click on programs. Once you click on the programs, then uh, you can go to uh, shows. And then when you get shows, then you press that, and then the the um, chat room becomes available to you. And um, there we go. You can get in there and, you know, do your thing. And sometimes. I will pick up something from the chat room and present it to Mr. Fuller. But do not use the chat room to ask me a question to ask Mr. Fuller. And lastly, for your information and mine as well, Mr. Fuller had an had an interview with Carl Nelson on last Thursday, August the 31st. But I didn't get the memo until this morning, but that's okay. I am planning on listening to it after the conclusion of today's program, but he's on there. And if you want to listen to it, you can. We can listen together. Uh, All we have to do is go to ProduceJustice.com, and thank you to Robert. He has informed me that it is up there, even though what he was telling me was breaking up, but I did hear that. So I would be interested to hear what Mr. Fuller and Mr. Uh, Mr. Carl Nelson had to say, always inter- interesting to me. But anyway, it is there at ProduceJustice.com. And while you are there, listen, now this is important. Make sure that you or if you love others or speak to others, make sure that you get the books because all of the books that Mr. Fuller uh, has written are are on uh, right there. Pro- yeah, uh, right there at ProduceJustice.com. And some people, some people, uh, there are three volumes. 
1984, the 2016 edition, which is a revised version of the 1984 edition. And there is an additional book called The Word Guide. And as Mr. Fuller has said, that is not a dictionary. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to get Mr. Fuller to explain that. Mr. Fuller, uh, explain that why that third book is not a dictionary. Well, a dictionary, from what I understand a dictionary to be, is about, uh, you might say, basically, all the words that in the English language, if you're talking that language, the words and what they mean in that language. And some dictionaries, uh, what you might call comprehensive, which means they contain more words, presumably, than other dictionaries. That's why all different dictionaries, some of them are called concise, meaning what? They have less words than the average dictionary. So, but the word guide, the compensatory counter races word guide is just picking out some words, not trying to have them all, that will help a person who is a victim of white supremacy to use words in a better manner in the English language than is common to use. And many of them with different definitions than what we're used to having. Like the term America, American. An American is a person that practices justice. That's the compensatory definition. So it's a compensatory word guide. An African is a person that practices justice. An Asian is a person that practices justice. If you don't practice justice, you're not an American. You're not an African. You're not an Asian. You are a person that does not practice justice because you have to practice justice in order to be in the word guide, according to the compensatory counter-racist word guide. You are not an African, an Asian, or an American at all if you don't practice justice. I'm giving an example now of the type of word guide that is in this particular book that you go to by going to producejustice.com. That's just one example of how the words American, African, or Asian are used. And since no one can practice justice in the system of white supremacy, it's impossible to do that. Then nobody is an African, an Asian, or an American. It shouldn't be praised for being one. It shouldn't be denounced for being one. Because nobody is qualified in a system of white supremacy to be one. So we're talking about non-existent people. And that is the most sensible definition for all three of these words, the most logical. Otherwise, the words are very confusing, like they are for most people. What's an African? What's an American? What exactly is an Asian? What makes an Asian an Asian? I mean, in order to say that you're an Asian, what makes an Asian an Asian? See, well, that, that, that person is an Asian. And, they, and even they say something called Eurasian. And... The person who is using any term 
should explain what the term means. Otherwise, don't use it. And so you have to sometimes, like I have done with this word guide, change the meaning of words in the English language. And that's what I've done in the word guide. Many words stay the same. But where I say it's necessary in order to counter racism and produce a product called justice, you have to change the meaning of words. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. Okay. In order to accomplish that. The whole purpose of having any language is to communicate in such a way that you get done what should be done. That's all that language is good for anyway, to get the most constructive results. That's what this word guide is supposed to do. Okay. All righty. You can get the word guide and the two books by going to ProduceJustice.com. All right, back to the phone lines, and we're going way out to Texas. I don't know if there's a state tax in Texas, but my two daughters live out there. But guess who's on the line? Delbert. Get ready, man. Texas, here we come. All righty, Delbert, you're on. Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. Uh, I came across a, a old reader from, like, 1908, and it it get the, uh, gave the races of man, and for the first race, it gave Caucasian a white race, but it noted it under A, superior to all others and most numerous. And I was just wondering about uh, the earlier definitions of race. How how does do they compare to Mr. Fuller's definition of uh, race? Oh, uh, well, according to the code, what I have written, uh, the compensatory definition is that there's only one race, and that's the white race, because race is racism. There's no other races of people. There are colors of people, brown, what's so-called red, Depends on what your eyesight is. And uh, a lot of people who are called red will say, like red skins, they say, my skin is not red. All right. And, uh, but basically, people who are called that, uh, the people are brown. It's just a shade of brown. And depends on how it looks to the average person, depending on how you view things, because people have eyesight that views colors a different way. Uh, Like I've been told that I am colorblind. And I don't even know whether that's true or not, because how blind? And when I was told that by trying to get, I was trying to get a job, and I figured that's why I didn't get the job on account of the color of my skin. It didn't have anything to do with me being colorblind. Because what do you mean by colorblind? I knew some colors. In fact, you know, I know green from red and purple and lavender. uh, And these are just all titles for colors. But I was trying to get a job, and I don't think the person wanted me to have the job that was interviewing me. And so... He said, we're going to give you some tests. And then he came to the conclusion, uh, well, you can't get this job because you're colorblind. And I didn't believe it then. I, I was stunned. You know, I said, well, what, what's that got to do with it? He said, well, it has to do with looking at lights. And you're going to have to be able to tell the difference between the colors green from red. I said, well, I think I know the colors because we're talking about traffic lights. I said, it's red, green, and yellow. I said, you know, I I can see those very clear. And he says, well, 
not according to this chart and this test that I gave you. You you don't you won't be able you you'll get confused because you're colorblind. And so but I understood. I understood the racism. You see, but I knew that one thing I better know the difference between black and white. I mean, I, I, that, that was clear, and they would see to it that I would know, and mm-hmm. which is what they were doing then. So it just depends, depends on what context you're talking about and what the person is intended to do. That's, it always comes down to that. Okay. Now, another thing, another thing you got to watch Neely for, because he's, he's losing his ability to concentrate. And that's true. I got to tell my audience that. And to get to the place where I'm no longer of any use on a program like this, because I've been noticing particularly in the last two years that I cannot stay focused on the question that's being asked me and I know it should be that a lot of people should have noticed that and so I'm just asking people to help me because codification counter-racist codification about people mm-hmm. being able to spot other people's weaknesses mm-hmm. And uh, of course, you're helping me. Yes. We're all weak in some okay. things and strong in some things. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Fuller, um, you have uh, publicly asked this, and you've done this on several occasions, ask for help for people to keep you from being distracted or off subject or, or uh, losing focus. But it's been my experience, and when we were on another, when we were on TalkTainmentRadio.com, and even on this program, um, people do not like it if you are. I'm gonna use this term in air quotes, corrected or put back into focus. They look at it as a sign of correction, and they are very offended if I do that. Uh, and you have asked me to do that, but if you've noticed, I refuse to do that because I, I don't want to be criticized for correcting you as such as, as you are. Even though you ask for it to happen, people seem to be offended, you know, when that does happen. So that's why um, that hasn't uh, happened up until now. Now, it could happen that, that maybe uh, – uh, something could happen, or somebody could suggest ways in which I could do that without being offensive, because we don't want to do that because we're trying to produce justice. But what you have said will be taken under uh, consideration, and um, hopefully there might be some suggestions suggestions coming in how that could be done without being offensive to to you, to the listeners, and even to the lo- new listeners, because as we all know the the um, enemy would like to do anything to disrupt this program, which is highly effective, in my opinion. But anyway, we'll move on from this. So thank you, Mr. Fuller. And thank you, um, Delbert, um, from uh, uh, Texas uh, for your uh, call. Uh, while we have you, Mr. Fuller, uh, this term has come up, and I'm going to get to you, Ross. And you too, uh, uh, Rita Triple Eight. Um, this term has come up, um, and maybe you can explain it a little more. Called race buffering. What would your definition, according to the code, be of race buffering? Well, if I understand the use of the term, uh, it means something that protects something from something mm-hmm. else, one mm-hmm. force. See, so what the white supremacists do, when I have used that term, and I use it within the context of kind of racist, uh, a word guide, you might say, what does buffering mean? It means something that's between one thing and another yes. in order to absorb 
the, the shock, you might say, mm -hmm. like a shock, shock uh, absorber on a vehicle is to keep something steady and from being harmed by another force, like the road on what you call a shock absorber on a, mm -hmm. on a car, okay? And so you can do the same thing with people. Now, what the white supremacists do when it looks like they're having problems with someone who, a black person, for instance, who is working to end racism, and this white person is interested in, well, no, I'm going to try to keep this person from ending racism, and I'm white. That person is black, so uh, what I need is another black person to put in between me and the black person who is trying to destroy racism, and I'm trying to maintain it. So I'm going to have this other black person. I'm going to pull them out of the sidelines, you might say, mm -hmm. and and put that person in between me and the other black person so that every time this black person who's trying to destroy racism does something, I'm going to have this other black person act as a buffer between okay. me and, 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 this, and this black person because I'm white and I'm trying to maintain racism. Okay. This other black person is trying to destroy it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this other black person, I'm going to pay him or her to get between me and where the opposition is to me. And every yes. time this black person says something about getting rid of racism, I'm going to direct his attention or her attention to this other black person and say, well, talk, talk to him about that. Talk to her about that. I mean, let, let, let's one of your own kind. I mean, uh, that, that, that's the way you can resolve it. Knowing full well that this buffer black person has absolutely no power at all. Okay. So the victim of white supremacy has to always be aware of that. Oh, yes. that okay. That this person, you know, every time I get ready to talk to this suspected white supremacist, when, when, what I get when I try to make contact is this black person who is what you call, like in football, running interference. Yes. It's a buffer. Interference. Buffer, I, got to yeah. always, I got to always talk to him or her. Mm -hmm. because, and, and this white person would say, well, I don't know all very much about that, so you have to talk to Mr. Evans about that. Now, Mr. Evans is black. So every time you walk down the hall and go into an office, rather than the white person talking, who where the center of the power is, all the power, it's Mr. Evans that's sitting okay. there. Okay. And then you all get into a shouting match that just goes on forever. Okay. And then you, the next thing you know is you and Uncle Tom and a sellout and whatnot. Now, he can't sell nothing out. He don't own nothing. <laughs> don't own nothing. <laughs> So okay. what's the remedy? So according to the code, I'm making, I'm trying to make this clear. What you do is say, okay, Mr. Evans, I think I know what this game is. So I don't want you to get hurt. So I, I just want to talk to the white person who told you to talk to me. I just want to talk to them and ask them some questions. Did they tell you to talk to me? And then I want to talk to that white person because the closer you get to a white person about anything dealing with race, the better answers you get, even if you don't like the answers. But when you're, you're always talking to black people about settling the race problem, you're not going to get your best answers. 
I don't care who they are, including nearly four. When you're talking to a white person about settling the race problem, now you're getting serious. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Fuller. <clears throat> thank you very much for that explanation. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Sorry to get in your ear with that. Uh, let's go to the Gmail. And this is from Ross. I mean, says this, Mr. Fuller, according to your code, Mr. Fuller, is contact between black males and females in the area of sex considered constructive if it provides mental health help to the victims of white supremacy? If it uh, provides mental self-help? It just says mental, if it provides mental health help to the victims of white supremacy. Well, well, you measure it by the what? Constructive results. You You either get a constructive result or you don't. See, it's always, just keep that in mind, just those two words. Now, this this interaction, did it produce a constructive result? And if so, how? What was the constructive result? So in order to know, you have to know what you set out to do. That's the only way you, you know is when you know. That's just the evolution of, Acquiring knowledge and understanding and getting the constructive results that you're supposed to be getting from every breath that you take. Every breath that you take is supposed to produce a constructive result. Never, never, never a non-constructive result. So you will learn that by whatever you're doing. Did this produce a constructive result, and if it did, how? You know, you ask yourself that that question. Mm-hmm. Just like keep keep everything in mind, even with this program. It's either going to be constructive or non-constructive. Every move that you make, it's got to be a constructive result move. Now, when I do this and I do that and I do this other, it's going to produce the most constructive result that will ever come from anything that's done that pertains to something like this. This is the goal of this program, even. If it doesn't reach that goal, we're still reaching. And we can just say that because that's the truth. So the goal of this program is to solve the race problem. Has it reached that goal? No. But you keep trying. That's how any problem is solved. You keep trying. And you try by doing what? Questions and answers. Because this is what this program is about. Questions and answers. Mm -hmm. So in answer to that question, you just say, well, do it. Or don't do it. If you perceive that it's something that shouldn't be done based on studying what has happened before and it turned out to not produce a constructive result, then don't do it. That's what you call learning from experience. Okay. Which is what learning is all about. All righty. All right. Thank you for that that explanation for Ross. Ross, Aras, I know you're up in California, so thank you. And, um, Mr. Fuller, answer your question. Mr. Fuller, going back to your example that you used for that job that you said you didn't get because you were, quote, unquote, colorblind, well, um, there was a comment by Justice Warrior in the chat room that I found interesting, and it just said this. 
you didn't get the job, Mr. Fuller, because you were colorblind. You didn't get the job because you were colorblind, but because you were colored. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Let's see here. Moving down here. And uh, as far as the um, buffering is concerned, or uh, a comment, let me see if I can get this correctly here so that we can have an understanding. Uh, Justice Warrior wrote this concerning being uh, a buffer, a racial buffer. <clears throat> Quote, or rather, this is what he said. The Negro serves as the guard dog for white supremacy. And in order to get to the white supremacist, you must first go through the Negro gatekeepers. To say you can just bypass the Negro guard dog gatekeeper is to say you can push past bodyguards or attack dogs and go straight to, quote, the man, end of quote. That's unrealistic. How about that? A little bit of side information and code. Has anybody ever heard the term Animal Farm, in particular by George Orwell? Hmm. All righty. We're coming up upon the close of the first hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. And Mr. Fuller, as we break it on down and conclude the first hour, I'm going to give you the two minutes that we have remaining in this first hour to speak about your book or anything you want to speak for about two minutes, and then we'll close this bad boy out. Mr. Fuller? Well, I just, uh, just, I, I just have to say, purchase the book. Because the book is about solving the race problem as an individual person. You as an individual person, things, suggestions about what to do, what not to do, and how to go about doing it, and how not to go about doing it. And some ideas about those the procedures for doing that. And things not to do just in your, your everyday comings and goings because they don't produce constructive results. Like just simple things, like cursing people out. Why? It doesn't produce a constructive result. When you can just talk without doing that. You can talk without using profanity. That's possible. That's not impossible. Is the profanity helping you to communicate? The answer is usually no. Mm -hmm. The person starts tuning you out. They don't want to communicate with you and you're using profane language. They don't mm. find that pleasant. They don't mm. find that cooperative. Don't we know that? So <laughs> just, yeah, we, we, from trial and error, we should say, well, that doesn't work very well. Right. So you just don't do it. Don't call people any name except what the name person wants to be called. Right. People okay. are more willing to cooperate with you. Name calling. That's what the book, simple things like the book says. Don't name call anybody except just find out what name they want to be called, and that's the name that you always use without fail. Even if they change their name every five minutes, <laughs> which okay. sounds absurd, but a person would say, well, I changed my name every five minutes. Okay. And so you say, well, just tell me what, you want, what you, you want me to call you, and I'll do it without fail every time. With, without fail. So okay. I'm not going to take anything from it or, give it or add anything. 
yes, sir. Okay, everybody, that concludes the first hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller. But stay tuned. Stay right there. Stick and stay. Don't go away. We have a second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Now, if you have to go, hey, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for participating. And hopefully that we can hear from you next week. But we have another hour to go. Oh, yeah. We have another hour to go. So I will say this. We'll be black in seven seconds. All righty. Thank you once again for allowing us to come into your home by the Internet. And welcome to the counter, the second hour of the CRCS, commonly called the Counter Racist Coach Show, with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. And thank you, Mr. Fuller, for the privilege of being able to do this. And thank you, callers, for listening to today's program. Now, quickly to get in contact with the show, just dial this number, 516 453 9921, and when you get that number, make sure you give the call screener your name so that I can properly introduce you, and then um, then your name will come up on the screen just as Dre from Oklahoma, but it looks like you're off the screen, so call back. Then that way I'm able to give you a proper introduction. You can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, M R B O. BBY at gmail.com. And when you do that, I will have an opportunity to ask Mr. Fuller your question. Now, I would ask that you be brief in that, ma'am and sir. Please be that brief so that Mr. Fuller can fully understand the question. And I do try to read it so that Mr. Fuller can answer the question and hear what you are saying to give you the appropriate suggestion for uh, uh, your your question, so please be sure to do that. Maybe that's why you hear some things that may be capitalized, and I will over-dramatize it by speaking loud or something like that, but just knowing that this stands out, that you want this point to be stood out, so do that. You can um, also join the chat room, which many have, and thank you for the chatters. All you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com, and then you want to make sure that you get the programs menu. Click on programs, and then shows come up. And the show you want is the Produce Justice Show. That's the show you want right there, right there, right there, right there. You get there, and you get on there, and then you're able to get into the chat room because it becomes available to you, which you can get in there. And there are some good questions and good topics in the chat room, and occasionally – I will lift one off of there, maybe two or three, depends, and present them to Mr. Fuller for um, maybe comment or suggestion. Sometimes not, just something to be said. Sometimes things are coded. But it's for you to investigate, look up, and do what? Ask questions. Very, very good. Also, very important, Mr. Fuller's interview on the Carl Nelson Show from last Thursday, which was August the 31st, 2023, is now up and available on ProduceJustice.com. My plan is to, after the show, to make sure that I turn that bad boy right there and listen to what Mr. Fuller had to say uh, on the Carl Nelson show. Very, very good. But you have that opportunity to do that, ProduceJustice.com. And while I am there, don't forget... The books are available at ProduceJustice.com. Okay. All righty. Let's go right here. And thank you, Dre, for um, for calling back. But i got to do this first because this person has been trying to um, get in for a long time. Finally, finally got her. So... This is uh, Rita, Triple Eight, Mr. Fuller, and she asked a question, and here it is. <clears throat> Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., your poignant words 
quote, considering how mistreated and unprotected black women have been, it's a wonder any of them have any decency left at all, end of quote. Deeply resonates with me. Uh, let's see. Within the context of the tragic arrangement of black females enduring violence and mistreatment at the hands of black males, your guidance is crucial. Based on the code, Mr. Fuller, you also advise males to, quote, not blame the black female, end of quote, for the current condition we are in. Now, given your counsel of, quote, no contact, no conflict, Mr. Fuller, no, no contact, no, no conflict, end of quote, Mr. Fuller, as well as the call for implementing the code, what actionable steps can black males take to authentically acknowledge the mistreatment of black women have have endured and actively contribute to improving the quality of relationships between black males and females well according to the code you start with the truth and you reveal it that's what the code says about anything that's true so the black female is not the cause of black male's problems. No way. More than anything, I mean, she carries a burden. The black male was always hiding behind the black female's skirts and beating her up and knocking her around and calling her names in the process. Because he's mad at the white supremacists. That's been his whole history in dealing with white supremacy. Meaning, there's an old saying, I mean, uh, he, he leaves work mad as he can possibly be at the white supremacists. And first thing he does is kick the dog the dog is helpless, and then goes to work on the black female. He starts name-calling her about this and uh, complaining about the food and, and this and that and the other. And when he does something and the white supremacist is looking for him to punish him, he's out there and there's an old saying about the Negro in the wood pile. And who does he send to defend him? Master, he ain't here. That's the black female. He was around here a few minutes ago, about an hour ago, but, you know, he takes off every now and then and goes somewhere. I don't know where he is. He's hiding right out there in the woodpile, hiding behind the black female skirts, and he's still doing that. The black male says what? While we are talking right now, some black male is in the holding cell getting in touch with my grandma, getting in touch with my mama. He said nothing about that dad because the dad is in there with him. How about that? So don't ever say anything under any circumstance that's considered to be a put-down of black females. I don't care what they're doing because they have protected you from extinction. There ain't no buffer in between uh, a black male and the white supremacist other than the black female. Master, please don't whip him. Don't whip him. He's a good man. He won't do it no more. She's the only one pleading. 
Ain't nobody else pleading. His buddies ain't pleading. Because we all, we all just arming ourselves to kill each other. We're killing each other now uh, on a daily basis. So we ain't no buffer. We ain't got no buddies to protect you from the white supremacists. Now, we all armed to the teeth, I mean, to try to protect each protect ourselves from each other and shooting wildly through the walls or anywhere else where there's other black people, particularly black females. She is expendable to black males. Oh, that whole ain't nothing. Oh, mm-hmm. what did you call her? I called her a whore. That's what she is. Whoa! Well, now, how did she get to be that? Does she want to be a whore? Could you do something, maybe? I mean, no. Uh, in fact, uh, she got to be a whore by me putting her on the street and making her one. Go a lot whoop her if I didn't. That's the truth, folks. So confront racist man and racist woman yourself. Don't ask her to do nothing. If she does anything, and the code says this, anytime a black female puts her body down in a prone position and ready to receive sex, with a black male, and this is what the code says, she's doing him a whale of a favor because he ain't eligible for that at all. He's no protector. He's proven that. She's protecting him. Get in touch with my grandma. Get in touch with my mama. Mama, mama, mama. I, I, I'm in the joint again. And like I said just before, well, what about Daddy? Well, he's in here with me. Both of us are in here. But we both beat up on you. I disobey everything that you said. If you're the child, and you didn't pay no attention to it at all, or the females that came before you that were trying to protect you and keep you out of trouble, then you're just making more trouble. Get in touch with my mama. Get in touch with my grandma. Big, strong black male. Get in touch with my mama in the holding cell. That's going on right now, over and over and over and over again. You ain't protecting nothing. Not eligible to. Well, I whooped everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah, in the hood. You get in that alien environment where some ordinary white people just walking them down the street. You tread lightly, and you know it. Who do you think you're fooling? You ain't tough. Tough means bring me your strongest white man and white woman in the world, and I'll run circles around them. I'll have them begging. Yeah, right. That's according to the code. We're not yes, telling the truth. We're liars, big time, particularly black males. In answer to the question, black males, we are super time liars because we lie to ourselves about our power. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'm uh, super because I can beat up on a black female. Wow. That's what makes me. That's what makes me strong. 
Okay. Uh, I can say this, that um, triple, Rita Triple Eight has written back and said that your answers um, have brought tears uh, to her eyes. Very, very touching. Very touching, Mr. Fuller. Uh, Justice Warrior wrote from the uh, chat. He said, uh, basically, not entirely true, Mr. Fuller. Be aware of putting that talking point out there with all these white supremacist feminists and their mammy feminist daughters out here who may be listening and seek to use your commentary, Mr. Fuller, to weaponize against black men. Black men are not a race of ignorant, illiterate brutes who just beat up on black women or hide behind their skirts rather than taking responsibility or action. I resent that notion, and so do most other black men in here who take care of business and are steadily attempting to upend this system of injustice. Okay. That comes okay. under BGQ, and people should think about that. Mm-hmm. But, but the white supremacists, according to the code, engineered all of that. The white supremacists engineered all conflicts between, since the beginning of white supremacy, between black males and black females. But many will say, who study history, that black males would kind of mistreat black females before there was any contact with white people at all. And this is kind of true of non-white people in general and true of white people when it came to white men and white women. And it's still true to a great degree, according to white women themselves. So this mistreatment of females is kind of universal. But with black people, it is devastating. And we should say, according to the code, we're not blaming the black female for nothing, mm-hmm. even though we can grit our teeth at the things that they do and the things that they think they have to do and whatnot. But really, we don't have any power over them. We re- we gave up that power because we let ourselves be taken over by the white supremacists. That is the one truth that the that black people, black males, just don't want to turn loose to or, or grab hold to. Mm-hmm. We came under the system of white supremacy. That's why all this bragging, black males got nothing to brag about, period. Nothing in history. I don't care how many inventions we came up with. How were we taken over by the white supremacists. What black male can tell the truth and answer that question? How did that happen if we're supposed to be this, that, and the other? I mean, just look at the huge numbers of black males, black people on the planet. And the white supremacists, just a handful can show up at 9 o'clock in the morning and by noon, they got every black person, male and female, eating out of their hand. How do you explain it? Hmm. Nearly full. Can you explain how that happened? Oh, hmm. well, uh, 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 I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, you hmm. don't want to talk about it, you don't want to solve the problem. How did that happen? Well, I want to talk about uh, our, our great kings and queens. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> I'll say the one thing for you, Mr. Fuller. <laughs> to me, you ain't lost no focus. You right on it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty, here's the number, 516-453-9921 is the number you call to get in contact with the show to ask Mr. Fuller. Be sure to press the number one button. If you have a uh, question or comment, make sure you get a call screen of your name. And big shout-out to all the chatters. Man, you're blowing up today. That's the only thing I can say. All righty, get ready, Dre. We're going out to where Mr. Fuller was born, the state of Oklahoma. Muskogee, I guess, if that's the correct pronunciation. I don't know. But anyway, Dre, get ready. And that 405 area code, here we go, Dre, you are on with Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Yo, good morning. Can you hear me? Come on, Dre, you're there. All right, just maybe sure. Uh, let me start off by saying this is not based on any religious theology, what I'm about to say, but spirituality. Uh, based on my observation, white supremacy is a consequence of demonic supremacy. I say this because when you look at the direction them 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 that city is being guided towards, you notice the influence of sorcery, cold values being promoted especially nowadays. As the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities. Now, if a person can't understand what I'm saying, I understand because the Bible also says that a natural man can't perceive spiritual things. So with that said, I truly believe white supremacy is just a result of the demonic supremacy. And that's all I have to say. That's my VGQ for the day. Thank you for your time. All righty. VGQ, Dre. All right. Thank you for your VGQ. No, no questions in there? Okay. All right. Thank you, Dre, for your VGQ. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, Dre. Gotcha. All righty. Let's keep on. Hey, New York make an appearance in the house, and that's Tress. Get ready, Tress, as we move over to uh, NYC. Here we go. Let me get this right over here. And okay. Yes, successful. Tress, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Hey, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. I called yes, them seriously. It's okay to ask another question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so my question is, uh, in the system of white supremacy, there's systems set up where those that really want to make a difference or want to solve the problem, uh, the system is set up where they cannot do so uh, due to barriers or due to environments where they're not allowed to. Uh, in these environments, Mr. Fuller, how do you, uh, how does one go about uh, replacing the system of white supremacy with justice or addressing the issue? In these type of environment, environments. Thank you. Codify everything so that every move that you make, everything that you say, produces a constructive result. Basically, the whole principle of everything that I'm saying on this program is simple. Just those two words. Always ask yourself is this thing that I'm saying, this thing that I'm doing, is it producing the most constructive result that anybody will ever achieve one way or another? This thing that I'm doing and the way I'm going about doing it. And if it isn't producing a constructive result or all constructive results, which is supposed to be the goal, then re-examine it and find out what you're doing that will produce the corrections, that will produce the most constructive result. I've been talking for years, I mean, you know, about white supremacy and people, but and people justifiably so, but say, you keep talking about the problem, Fuller, but you're supposed to be your book is supposed to be about solving the problem. 
Well, it took me some time to say, duh, yeah, to myself. Yeah, they're correct. And I'm going along, uh, I'm doing all kind of roundabout ways of getting to the point, like I do right now sometimes, out of habit. But everything is just about, wait a minute, this thing that I did today, did it produce the most constructive result that will ever be produced by anybody, anywhere. And if it didn't, go back to the drawing board. Codify everything so that you produce what? The most constructive result in everything. Yes. You don't make a move on nothing. In economics, the use of time and energy, which is basic economics, according to the word guide, I'm using my time and my energy to produce what? A constructive result. So did I do that when I had that conversation with so-and-so yesterday? Ask yourself that. See, that's the, that's your guide, this you and logic, like you are on the planet with nothing but you and the logic of the universe. Not nearly full, or not talking into this and asking this person that. Suppose you were the only person on the planet. What would you have? The ability to think. And thinking is supposed to lead you to logic. And logic leads you to doing what? Producing constructive results. Mm-hmm. Or non-constructive results. And that's all this textbook for victims of racism is about. And that's all this program is supposed to be about. Yes, sir. So in answer to your question, just measure everything by after it's done, did it produce the constructive result that you set out to do? And if it didn't, codify the way to do it, to get it done, Mm -hmm. produce that constructive result. But you have to know what you set out to do in the first place. And the main thing is, should you, should you be using your time and energy to produce this constructive result? Okay. All righty. We struck a chord here, and I'll explain that after we take a break. Thank you, Text. You're listening to the Counter Racist Coach. Robert. Hello. 
Well, yeah, Mr. Fuller. Mr. Yeah. Fuller. Can What's you hear? Happening okay. Here? Uh, I think the usual suspects are in play here because uh, it went off the went off. I went off the air for a little while. I don't know what's going sure on. Yeah, and I hear all this music in the background, and I'm trying to get the host to uh, maybe we can put an end to that because I can barely hear you. I can hear you, but that music in the background is not good. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but that's what I meant that. That the, your show or the show is becoming so effective that there are many things that are uh, happening in there. And I was getting ready to say that we struck a chord. But anyway, I was going to say that um, if we come down to the last 30 minutes, you know, of the uh, of the show, uh, which I have to give, the uh, number to call in is, um, again, uh, 516-453-9921. You can do that. Press the number one button if you want to be heard. I don't know what technical problems that uh, uh, we're having because I was just booted off the air <laughs> and just just now heard Mr. Fuller, but we're back on uh, as far as that is concerned. Uh, Mr. Fuller can be heard also at the um, his interview that was last Thursday, August the 31st, 2023, on the Carl Nelson Show. And we have it here at ProduceJustice.com, so you can dial that up and um, listen to that uh, interview that he has there. There's been some interesting questions and comments in the chat room, and um, one of the things that I was going to uh, mention, if I can get it, because we're having all kind of um, issues here, but that's okay, is that um, you have to be careful in... um, what we're doing and still learning in the chat room wrote this says we all know that within the confines of racism white supremacy there is a war campaign in effect to turn quote black end of quote men and women against each other in an effort to dilute prevent the concentration of quote black end of quote energy that could be used to solve problems. Please be cautious in, quote, charging, end of quote, each other with offenses without considering the source or the intent. I know that one of the things we're not supposed to do is call people names. We're supposed to get an understanding. And a lot of times we don't because people take sides and issues. But you have to be careful because we have to remember that we're, out of, we're in a war. And they, they, being the white supremacists, will employ many tactics, including, as we, Mr. Fuller discussed earlier, racial buffering. Any and everything that they can do, they will use that. Mr. Fuller, you have experience in that area. Can you give an example of, of how they try to... Uh, use whatever they have to keep us apart from still learning how to solve the uh, race problem. Well, for one thing, we glorify conflict. And we really puff it up in the movies and in songs and whatnot about black people dogging each other. I mean, directly and indirectly. We glorify it. A lot of the jokes, so called. And in situation comedies and all like that, black people putting each other down. And when they show scenes where black people are supposed to be, uh, quote, unquote, loving each other, it comes across as just as phony as it can be. And just as phony when it comes to the truth and revealing it even in a drama, dramatic way. It just doesn't come across as being real, because it's not. And it's no joke. That's another thing. A lot of the things that are supposed to be jokes are not jokes. And it's treachery that the white supremacists are financing and orchestrating and making it look like it's supposed to be funny when it's not. 
And we're trained that way. That's what all the gunfire recently is. It's increasing. It's getting worse. We keep talking about progress. Well, we've made more progress in this year than we made last year. With all this killing, black people in the midst of all this killing alone, talking about celebrating anything, the code says, and we'll keep harping on this, we're not eligible to celebrate anything, and not even anybody's birthday. We're not, we're not worthy of that. All of us black people, all of the victims of the system of white supremacy, you can vaguely think about maybe, quote, unquote, celebrating after the system of racism has been replaced with the system of justice and not one second before. Now, that's according to the code, which is based on logic. When we're thinking about it, well, that's celebration time. No, 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 no. Nowhere near close to being mm-hmm. eligible. We, we, we are too far gone mm-hmm. into the snake pit. As long as we're under the system of racism, we're not eligible for any type of celebration. Like that soldier said in the movie Saving Private Ryan. He said, Captain, I I don't feel good about this one, talking about a mission that they were on. And the captain said, when is the last time you felt good about anything? He was sending Mm -hmm. a message. You're a soldier on a battlefield. It's not about feeling good. It's about winning this war. You're a soldier on the battlefield and you run around here talking about feeling good. You're on a battlefield. Black people are on a battlefield. Mm-hmm. And we talk about celebration time. Just as crazy as we can be. You yeah. can't walk out your door without bullets hitting you. 15 times, and two of them going through the wall and killing your daughter. Celebration time? Are we crazy? Yes. But the white supremacists are to blame for all of it. Mm -hmm. For those who are saying that I'm blaming black people, that's not true. All All through the textbook for victims of white supremacy, this program is about you can't solve nothing without ending the system of white supremacy and 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 replacing it with a system of justice, which means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Get the most constructive help. In every job. area of activity. Yes, sir. Okay. Um let me ask you this, Mr. Fuller. Um, there's been a, some very good conversation in the chat room. Now, you have addressed what I'm getting ready to ask you many times, but uh, it came up in one of the comments in the in the uh, chat room, which people can go to blogtalkradio.com, click on programs, and then programs, click on the, the shows menu, and then when you get to the shows menu, you can click on the Produce Justice show. And then you can see these uh, the conversation, and it's really heavy today, Mr. Fuller. Uh, one comment uh, will have me to ask this question: Can you explain? And I know you've done this many times, but how is the black vagina used in this um, war of uh, racism, white supremacy? Uh, in every way that the white supremacists can use the black vagina. And in everything that black people do, the white supremacists look at it and see if it's a danger to the system of racism. And if it's a danger to the system of racism or they think it's heading in that direction, they do something to disrupt it. And they got thousands of ways of doing that. 
and that and that's all you have to do is realize that there is the most powerful government on planet Earth in the year 2023 is, and this is the name of it. Don't name it anything else. Mm-hmm. American government, Yugoslavian government. These are just words. Okay. But but the reality is the system of white supremacy. The system of white supremacy. That's the okay. only government on the planet. And you just say anything that's done on the planet anywhere that shouldn't be done, no matter how it looks on the surface, the white mm-hmm. supremacists are behind it. Okay. Why? Because they're the most powerful people, the smartest people, and the most powerful people, and the most evil people on planet Earth. Okay. With that being said, then how is the white male's anus being classified as the new black vagina? Oh, because they are they are found out, and they know, they are desperately working on it, and feverishly being successful, and and dumping money on it like you wouldn't believe, and everything else, and the propaganda machine. They say if we can disrupt in any kind of way the idea that a black male and a black female operate in in a compatible manner, in a constructive manner, if we can disrupt that, we got these black people forever. And the way to disrupt it is to have every type of sexual confusion that you can possibly think of. And, uh, you know, and this whole thing about when it comes to black people, LGBTQ, you know, find a sexuality for every alphabet. And then when you run out of the alphabets, start coming up with numbers or something, because numbers are kind of endless. Uh, alphabet, uh, the alphabet has limited numbers, so we're going to run out of them. But we want a a description of some type of sex act that's different from all the other sex acts for every alphabet. It seems like that you're going in that direction. And then dream of something, some type of activity that is fits. And come up with new types of sexuality. And tell black people that's what they need more than anything. And you'll be rewarded accordingly. You'll make more money at that in in inventing new ways of sex. Just keep that sex thing away from black male, black female. Do away with that slowly so that they don't notice it too much. But just keep, keep that black male apart from that black female as much as you possibly can as far as sex is concerned. We want to destroy that sexuality, and we're saying, hey, we got something better for you. The white male anus, that should be what every black male should see. And and in five generations, I mean, that'll be the main thing in his life. He'll wake up in the morning and go to bed at night dreaming about the white male anus. He's got to get to one right now. Uh, 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 You know, it'll be... Not an addiction, but that's our whole culture now. Have you seen the latest white anus, black male? Uh, Oh, boy. I mean, have you seen the style of them this year? I mean, oh, that's that. A black female, what's she good for? She's just in the way. In the way of what? Getting to that white male anus. Now, we'll... Start off, I mean, doing a little of this and a little of that, but ultimately, hey, where's my white male? Y'all talking about all of this and all of that, but sex, it ain't but one sex. Black male seeking it. The white male ain't us. It started 30 years ago, and now we're right on the edge of having that being the definition of sex. White male 
entertain us, showing us through the rear of a automobile, looking at it on TV from every angle, and say, now this is the goal in life of every black male on the planet when it comes to sex. Mm -hmm. This is apparently, if you're really thinking and watching what's going on out here, rainbow this, rainbow that, ultimately where it's going. That's the conclusion I've come to. So that that black male don't has a complete disdain for the black female vagina. So what are black females going to do? Running around trying to be males. That's the white supremacist assignment for black people, for their future. And then everything will be all right. Now you people finally got your real freedom, because that's what was it about in the first place. It was all about sex, but not sex the way the people thought about it usually. That's old-fashioned. Black people, want, you, you people do want to be up to date, don't you? You always say that you want to be on the cutting edge of something beautiful and new. Well, this alphabet soup that we got coming up for you, that's how it's going to start out. That, that's it's how gonna, it's going to start. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's going to it's going to wind up finally being when it comes to sex, it's that white male anus with a black male lusting at it. I mean, willing to forgive his sports and sport, and the black female. Well, there's just something to walk around. I mean, you know, but you wow. might as well seal sealed up their vaginas with cement. Mm. And a uh, black male ain't going to be able to recognize it. Okay. Wow. All righty. Mm. Let's do this. Okay, now I don't have your name because it's not on my screen, but I'm going to try this. This person in the 214, you are on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Can you explain in fine detail how the image specifically of white Jesus has affected your existence during the existence of racism and white supremacy? Has affected who or what? Can you explain in fine detail how the image of white Jesus has affected your existence during the existence of racism and white supremacy? It's affected by thinking, having everybody think uh, uh, whether it's true or not. I don't even know if it's true or not. That the white Jesus is white to the extent that the white supremacist has anything to do with it. They always say anything good is associated with white, and Jesus is supposed to be about goodness and righteousness and the example for everybody to follow in all things and all of his words. It has to be white. That's the okay. white supremacist. You know, the white supremacist says, now, I don't know whether Jesus was white or not. Because, like I'm saying, uh, they say that the paintings of Jesus was by a white man, Michelangelo, I mean, his most prominent uh, name that comes to mind, somebody told me. And so... I don't know, but to the extent that a white supremacist has anything to do with anything, it is to make white supremacists stronger. Okay. Keep that in mind about everything. If a white supremacist has anything to do with it, it's about making white supremacists stronger in any area of activity, any any time of day. All righty. Let's move on. Again, I don't have your name, but somebody in the area code 510 I'm going to get you in here as quickly as I can. What is your question for Mr. Fuller, please, quickly? And turn that radio down in the background. There you go. All right, go ahead. 
Hello? All righty. Not, not good. Okay, person in the 332 area. Uh, wait a minute. There you go. 332. Don't have your name here. Oh, Darnell. Go ahead, Darnell. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Fuller, I was wondering what would um get the um victims of white supremacy to see the um the cold book as a as a necessity as as a way of you know living life instead of just a um a go to when things get complicated. Well, uh, what code book? The code Yours. book that I, huh? Yes. And you're wondering if the white supremacists see it that way? No, the victims. Um, they how how can they use the code book as a, as a as a way of living life, like every yes. day? And that that's what it is. That's exactly okay. what it is. And a lot of it duplicates things that are said in. Thousands of books. I was looking through some, and this is a, another suggestion. It's not in the code book, but I'm going to make it here on the air. Some of the best books to get, if you just want to read books, are books with quotations. Now, just throw, go to your, there are thousands of them, and, uh, I think uh, there's a series of books called something like, I think I had one of them at one time, but actually they come out every year, I believe. I don't know. I haven't seen one in some time. I got some I got some copies somewhere. I have so many books. But Bartlett's, I think, if I'm saying it correctly, most likely I'm not. Bartlett's famous quotations or something like that. And it's a series. It comes out every year or every two or three years and they come out with new quotations and it's nothing but just quotes from different people. And if a person doesn't like to read, to sit down and read books uh, but like to get to the points real quick, that's one thing I would recommend that just everybody does. If okay. you're not what you call a habitual book reader, just get three and four good thick books. Get the thickest ones you can find of quotations made from everybody from Jesus to to uh, movie stars to uh, what's this fellow, Kung Fu? Yeah. What's his name? What What's the most outstanding person in Kung Fu? I don't know. I didn't pay that much attention to it. Uh, I, I oh. don't know. But it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, I'm just saying. Make it ruin their home Yeah. Okay. okay. Aesop, Jesus, Moses, quotations from different people, from different points of view. That that really, and and that's one of the fastest way. I mean, you know, way of speaking even though I do have a section in the back of the textbook that predictions of white supremacy, that's nothing but my quotations. Mm-hmm. But books of quotations will really make you think real fast. Oh, about right. a lot of different viewpoints from a lot different ways. Okay. Right. All right, thank you, Darnell. Let's we'll see if we can get this last question. This is, this is a new caller, Wesley from Richmond. Let me see if I can get you in. Uh, okay. There you go, Wesley. You're on. Welcome to the program. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? Yes. Um, good morning. I got a um, two part question. Five is politics. How does a non white person know um, whether he's dealing with a defined white people, white supremacist, or um, how can he spot a refined white supremacist? It's probably like um, a non black person dealing with. The Democratic Party, how can they recognize a non a refined white supremacy? The question is, how can a victim of white supremacy recognize a white person who is a white supremacist? Refined white supremacist. 
far as well, what what the code is. says what the code says about what to what to do about white people. Period. Well, the first thing you do is suspect that if the white person is able to be a white supremacist, that white person should be suspected of being one until proven different. Proven different from to whom? To you. Not to somebody else. They can't prove nothing by somebody else. I mean, sometimes there are some black people who will say, well, I was raised up with this white guy, and I know he ain't no racist. The code says, you don't take nobody's word for that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's. That white person has to prove it to you that they're not racist. Proving it to anybody else don't count. I mean, uh, another black person is, uh, they, why? Because the character, the main characteristic of a refined racist is deception. The white person who really is refined can convince millions of black people that he or she is not a racist. And millions and millions of black people will say, hey, I, I put them to a test, every test you can name. And this white person is definitely not no racist. Well, him or her saying that is no evidence of proof to you. You have to be convinced that this white person is not a racist. Until then... That's a racist suspect, according to the code. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you say it. It's like I'm saying it now. Suspected racist. If a white person asks me, any white person, Fuller, do you think that I'm a racist? And I say, according to the code, I'm supposed you to suspect you of being one. Code? What code? the counter-racist code. See, I don't have a guarantee that you're not a racist. So you should understand that I am supposed to suspect that you are racist until you prove to me that you are not. And I don't ask nobody else about whether or not you are a racist. I just ask you because the code says I can ask you, do you believe in racism? Then you're either going to lie or tell the truth. But I'm hmm. supposed to suspect that you're going to lie. Because if you are a racist, you're going to lie. Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. Well, uh, Wesley, I, I am so sorry. We are out of, of time. So um, being that you are a new caller... If you call back next week, Wesley, here in Richmond, a uh, new caller, we'll give you a, a shot at being up there again. Uh, is that okay with you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Wesley, for your cooperation. Well, Mr. Fuller, we've come to the end of an exciting uh, show. Uh, very good uh, points were uh, made or and suggestions. So we'd like to give this remaining moment to you. What would you like to say before we have to close it out? Yeah, and I, uh, something that was touched on on this program. I, people are not criticizing me because the code says you don't make a criticism, you make an observation. So the people who say, well, you know, uh, Mr. Bobby, you sounded like you were insulting Mr. Poole. No, if you're telling the truth, if you say... You know, to me, you are helping. Anytime we're talking about racism and you say anything, directly or indirectly, that's associated with racism, and you tell the truth, we need more of that. It's not personal, it's business. We're trying to solve a problem. And if Neely Fuller is getting feeble-minded, tell him that he is. 
I don't know if I'm getting feeble-minded. I wouldn't know that I'm getting feeble-minded. So then, now I, if somebody tells me, well, well, every time I ask you a question, and I've been calling in on this program, saying this, for example, and you keep talking about something else, and you're getting worse. Tell me that. Hmm. Because I think that. I think that mm-hmm. about myself. Yes, sir. Am I getting worse or am I getting oh. better? Mm-hmm. As the body always says, we're going to try to get better. Well, how am always. I going to get better? Neely Fuller, who is the question answerer on a question show, and he ain't answering questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, we're, and we're... He's the first one to know that. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Mr. Fuller. We're going to try to get better, but right now we are out of time, and we got to go. I'm sorry, but we got to go. But thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, all the callers. We will try to do better uh, next week. We do strive to get better. But thank you for listening. Go to ProduceJustice.com, and don't forget the interview with Carl Nelson with Mr. Fuller on ProduceJustice.com. Thank you for everybody. Mr. Fuller, last word to you. Produce justice and help to do that. By pointing out anything that needs correcting, I don't care who it is that needs correcting. All right. It ain't personal, it's business. All righty. Thank you. We hope to see everybody next week. Thank you for listening.